I'm ready to go home. Can you stay 10 minutes longer? I replied to my father, your sister Charlotte flew in from Seattle to see you. Okay, Dad said with a grin, the twinkle came back into his eyes. It was the morning of July 9th, 2014. A loud knock on the door made my heart pound. I was expecting Dad's brother, Fred, his wife, Kay, and Charlotte to arrive. They stood there with glistening eyes. I hugged them each as they walked by. I took a deep breath and followed them into Dad's room. Dad's adjustable bed was now in the family office. The door was open, Dad propped up and grinning from ear to ear as the trio came into view. He was the oldest of the three siblings. 10 minutes turned into a day. Conversations harked back to childhood days like the time the brothers repeatedly blew up the basement by running chemistry experiments. The second time made the local paper due to nearby windows being blown out. <laughs> Charlotte reprimanded dad for leaving his chemistry set behind for his high school brother to find, rolled her eyes and stated, you know, there are better ways to make the Seattle headlines. I could see the spark return to his eyes as the story was retold. Laughter blew up in the room. My son got to hear more family history and mom stood stoically by. There weren't enough hours that day to say everything the siblings wanted to convey, and plans were made for them to come back the next day. I got to witness something very special. His life did not pass before his very eyes. It happened over a two-week time span. I was able to appreciate this time and not be ripped apart by it, and I could be very present for him. Many people wondered how I could be so strong during this time, including myself. Especially since I have always been a daddy's girl. So why? Because the year prior, my daughter, Alyssa, departed this earthly realm. But that's a topic for another story. Our last outing was a family wedding. His sciatica began to act up. I could tell he was getting uncomfortable. We left before the reception took place. Skipping out on a meal was very unusual for him. <laughs> Eating soon became an issue. One day he couldn't swallow food. It was time to go to the doctor to run a few tests. The throat specialist ordered x-rays after the swallow test. I did not like what they had to say. A dark mass was found above his lungs. Three more tests the following week on three different days were lined up. Dad didn't care about the mass. His 89th birthday was a month and a half away and he only wanted to be able to eat a steak dinner by then. Dad was not happy about the extra test because it was getting harder for him to walk. I'm grateful we lived in an, ex an extended family situation since before my kids were born. We did many projects together over the years with him. Plus, I was his cohort in crime. That really made for fun times. Enjoyed coming up with vague cover stories to get out of the house. The running joke started when he was 70 and he told my mom he was going out. <laughs> The birthday skydiving video was shown to her upon his return. <laughs> I will never forget mom's tight face, disapproving look each time he returned from his adventures. It always cracked me up. Age 75, he got his ear pierced. Age 79, his first tattoo, a Chinese dragon. Alyssa completely encouraged him to get one, and we took him to Full Circle Tattoo. Woo! Mom finally stopped asking us where we were going. <laughs> hated, hated telling her our next outing would not be a fun one since Dad had not been able to eat solids for over a month. I let her know we were leaving for a doctor's appointment. 
dismayed to say we came back with bad news, a possible cancer diagnosis. My mom had the look of concern and disbelief. He, he was always the healthy one. That was some Friday. By Saturday and Sunday, he couldn't keep liquids down. I wanted to take him to the emergency room. Dad said he would be fine and refused to go. Monday morning came. He finally told me I could take him to the hospital when, he di when I didn't want him to get dehydrated. This was a blessing in disguise. The extra test happened in one day. Lung cancer confirmed. Plus it had spread throughout his entire body. No wonder he couldn't swallow. Why his hip began to hurt so much. My uncle Fred and Aunt Kay came out to the hospital. They normally got together for waffles and conversations on Mondays. It really touched me to see the two brothers continue this tradition in the emergency room. I could see them through the glass as my aunt and I gave them their brother time. Later, waiting by myself, the only thing I could think to do was try to make an appointment with the artist who did both my dad's and daughter's tattoos. Just to get a design appointment had a month's waiting time. I wanted to scream, but you don't understand, into the phone, but instead, I quietly hung up when I saw the doctor heading my way. I could take my dad home for indefinite hospice care. The ride home was filled with a heavy silence as we both pondered the verdict. Both of us were glad the dark clouds of lung cancer had not hung over us for six months to a year. That is the normal diagnosis lifespan. I got in touch with his East Coast friends to let them know now would be a good time to catch up due to a feeling in my gut. Little did I know that was the perfect thing to do. Time came to move his bed into the office, order medical equipment to suction out thick, sticky mucus from his throat and other supplies. I became my dad's nurse. It was bittersweet to take care of the man who took care of me and an honor to do so. I let the tears fall when needed, now to make the most of our remaining time. Things got real very fast. He put together a notebook to get his affairs in order. Not my favorite conversation we had on the deck. His smile came back when he talked about wanting a wake, a large party after the church service let me know he had a chunk of change set aside to make that happen. I told him I knew just the band to hire, the Dread Crew of Oddwood. <laughs> a seven-piece pirate band could play atop his 36-foot Manchurian trader that still resides in our side yard. The thought thrilled him. He had single-handedly sailed it back east before moving to San Diego to teach at Mesa College in 1984. The boat never made it back into the water after my parents made the move. It became the world's most expensive playhouse for my kids. The, the band would be a perfect send-off for a man whose CB radio trucker, trucker handle was Captain Hook. Many people thought he had lost his hand during the war, but not the case. He was born that way. Never slowed him down. A chemical engineer who developed Scott Viva paper towels, went kayaking, did karate, attended art classes with me, took up piano lessons at 70. The list goes on. Hospice nurses now came two days a week for a few hours to do what I could not. Those rampant cells took their toll on his brain, made it harder for him to convey thoughts. I watched him slip into past events. I felt like I was eavesdropping on conversations, even though the words were getting harder to make out. The first time this happened was very interesting. When he snapped back into current time, he was kind of surprised to see me. A smile formed as he realized what had just occurred. The best and fastest way to describe this phenomenon was to tell me, slowly, 
and distinctly. You are not watching the same channel as me. I smiled, his entire face lit up because dad knew I understood right away what he meant. A bonding moment for sure. The suction machine was always nearby now and a wheelchair became necessary. I rolled him wherever he wanted to go. Summertime in full swing, dad said our deck felt like we were sitting in a treehouse. He loved being outside. Every afternoon became a gift with friends and family stopping by to visit. He time traveled more often. Watching him, I could tell he was fixing and examining equipment of some sorts as he tapped the suctioning wand, mumbled out directions with faraway eyes. Sooner or later, he came back to me. I did not ask where he had been. No need. That was his time. Pretty certain he was at the paper mill. I hated to say that it was necessary to use that machine more often. It meant his lungs were getting worse. The nurses now came three days a week. Really not enough help. I had to pick up a baby monitor to keep better tabs on him at night. Daytime brought visitors. We would reminisce over iced tea. Two glasses made my dad, you know, so he asked me to wheel him back in. My father was really not happy that I had to assist him so much, especially in the bathroom. I never thought you would be doing this for me. I looked away for privacy. The next thing he said blew me away. I saw the little mermaid. <laughs> Thoughts raced through my head. We don't watch TV, we don't have cable, we don't have Disney DVRs, not possible. I used his line. I'm not watching the same channel. <laughs> he paused, guided my face to be looking directly at him. Then his tone got serious. You don't understand. I saw Alyssa. My heart went into my throat. The year prior, she had gone swimming by herself. Found out later, a huge low rainbow formed as the lifeguards brought her back to the beach. That sign made the unbearable bearable. I knew at that moment why he never had the horrible pain of cancer. She must have whispered into God's ear, take care of that one, he's my grandfather. Later, I found out three days before my grandmother's departure, her husband made his presence known to her. The family tradition of a pre-send-off had been continued. The baby monitor came in handy. One night, I heard my dad loudly mumbling. I raced downstairs. He was wide awake, or so I thought. Dad did not see me. He was in another place in time. This went on for three nights. I knew he was okay, but I still listened out for coughing fits. The fourth night, he quietly slept. That morning, I heard him wake up and race downstairs. I took his hand. I told him it was okay to go home. He looked at me one last time. The color in his eyes began to fade as his breathing slowed down, then stopped. I removed his wedding ring, a square-shaped band, a complete giant Chinese dragon's body made up the four sides. A unique ring for a unique man. Tears streamed down my cheeks. It was such a precious moment to hold his hand as he crossed over. I was glad he was able to let go when he did before his body declined any further. He really did not like the prodding nurse's visits, no matter how cute they were. <laughs> it made me happy to think, and I was pretty certain, his mermaid was first in line to greet her dragon. I will never forget the twinkle in his eyes, his can-do attitude, and our favorite poem. Later, his ring was made into a bracelet for me. I wear it every day. And by the way, his wake was incredible. <laughs>
people still talk about it. Dad knew it would be good for me to dance my ass off to rude pirate shanties. <laughs> Love you, Dad. Love you, Dad. <laughs> Marjorie Pizzoli, everyone.